A few things. Hey guys, thanks for 25,000 subscribers. It's incredible that we've hit this milestone. I usually put out a Q&A every 5,000 subscribers, so I thought I'd continue to do that. And I asked you a question on the community tab of my YouTube page. And through that, I kind of gather questions and I'm gonna answer some of them today. But one, sorry if there's any buzzing in the background, my computer's actually running a pretty heavy duty data recovery software. So that's gonna be running for the next 96 hours. That is currently why there's no V30 video that is to go up on Saturday, hopefully. Number two, sorry that this video is in 1080p because I have to edit on my laptop, which isn't very powerful. And number three, sorry that there's no really big content this week. Okay, so this question caught me off guard because it makes sense and it's something I've been talking about a lot with my friends on YouTube recently that stock Android is there and it's fantastic and everyone loves it but it doesn't have as many features as something like OnePlus skin which is still relatively low down and not very bloatful and for that I'd say OnePlus probably has the best version of Android even better than stock Android it's just the OnePlus Oxygen OS runs on lower end hardware than say a Pixel so that's the real issue here if I was to say like the best software I would say Oxygen OS but it doesn't run on like the higher end stuff like the Samsungs, the Pixels, the LGs, the Huawei. So it's kind of difficult to gauge how they would use and utilize that software, especially with their different feature sets. So yeah, the reason that we like stock is because it runs on the higher end stuff. I would say the best old flagship to buy right now is the Galaxy S7 Edge. I think it strikes a great balance between design and fluidity and as long as you get that battery replaced you're going to get a great experience. I think the Nexus 6P is one of the worst smartphones to buy in 2018 and I'm not sure if I talked about that much in my smartphones to avoid video but it is terribly bad when it comes to battery problems, screen problems, power problems, the thing is just a no-go in my opinion. I think the new Galaxy displays are going to be interesting but I personally like my displays with a little bit extra bezel and I'm not too fussed about them folding and all that kind of stuff. So I think it's cool and I'm really glad we have the technology because it just shows how far we're pushing in terms of the technology itself within OLED and AMOLED. But I'm not excited to see a foldable phone and I'm not excited to see notched Samsung phones. For a phone to keep forever, I'd probably say the newest OnePlus device, so like the OnePlus 6T. And I'm not saying that because I don't like my Pixel or I don't like the iPhone 10 or I don't like the Pixel 3. I'm just saying if I had to strike a balance between hardware and software that gets updated more frequently, OnePlus 6T is probably the best way to go. Funnily enough, I don't prefer Samsung phones and my favorite type of phone, if I had to kind of bundle them into like one preferred manufacturer that I'd always go to, OnePlus I really like. I really like OnePlus's hardware and its software and its integration. Then second, maybe Apple. Then third, probably Huawei. But yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not a huge, I, I like Samsung devices, but they're not my priority. Pocophone Mi A2, easily for the Pocophone. I mean, it's higher end hardware and higher end software. How much RAM do you need? Probably 16 gigs in a computer and probably around six to eight gigs in a phone, especially going into the future with software updates. I like skins, I like cases, but most of the time I rock the Pixel without anything on it. The iPhone 10 feels, however big your hand is I guess and the battery life is good for me. A lot of these questions are really subjective by the way. Alpha I would absolutely make this my job. I love doing this and yes sometimes it can be stressful but like everything can be you know playing football or like doing anything professionally can be stressful so I don't know if like this is where I want to be in a hundred years from now but I really do want to make this my job for especially the next 10-20 years. Unlikely though. The video is coming for the V30. If it's not coming on Saturday it will come this time next week. Although hopefully Saturday because I don't want to be without my computer for like an entire week. This is a really interesting question because I actually thought about this when I was doing when I do my speed tests for the last one I think I did was the Pixel 2 XL and the interesting thing about it is it doesn't really make much sense. Like obviously the, the uh, hardware that's in your phone is utilized very differently to what's, what it's used in the PC for. And I feel like those speed tests, whilst they can gauge like a, a, the, the powerfulness of a processor, which you can of course use to, to do more like processing heavy tasks, such as rendering CAD, uh, running simulations, stuff like that, that's like really gonna impact the performance. I feel like they're fairly useless on a phone. Like they're fa there's a, a decent correlation between the points scored on the test and how fast the phone is but a lot of the time it just comes down to the software integration with the hardware and that's something that I think is completely different when you go to Windows and Mac and Linux. On views India make up 9.9 .9, near enough 10% of my audience which is pretty interesting. This question was really interesting because I think out of context the S6 is actually quite a good phone but in the context that it is in obviously with its competitors but then also with the phones that surround the S6, such as the S5 and the S7, 
there are just so many better options. The S5 is going to be cheaper. It's going to be, you know, you've got a removable battery, which is definitely a plus with a used phone. You've got arguably a better design just because it's less prone to cracking and it's more durable. But then on the other side, you've got the S7, which has water and dust resistance, micro SD expansion, a far better SOC, especially if you live in the, in the UK or in Europe where it's an Exynos chip and you've got a way better camera. So I think it's important to, to know that there is context but behind a lot of the things that I say, and especially with the S6, it's a decent phone. I personally wouldn't buy one, but it's, per it's a decent phone out of context, but there's so many better options for that price. And the S7 isn't that much more expensive, especially here in the UK. The camera I use is a Sony a6300. If you wanna know more about that, let me know in the comments and I'll make like a behind the scenes or something. This one really got to me because I don't actually use an iPhone these days, I use a Pixel 2. But the thing with the iPhone and, and iOS, and this guy said that Android is the superior OS, it's not. Of course, there are benefits to going with Android, just as there are benefits to going with iOS. In terms of a back end, I would say iOS is actually superior because it does a lot more with lower end hardware than the higher end, you know, Android stuff does. And it's definitely more updated and more secure along, you know, the baseline. Of course, there are anomalies, but. In, in terms of an overall average, I'd say the iOS is the better backend. Obviously on Android, you get more access, and I think that might be what we're referring to. You get more access, more customization. There's more that you can actually do with your phone versus iOS. I wouldn't get, say you could quantify that as a better OS. I'd say they're probably on the same page in terms of how good they are. They just have different traits. This one's really interesting. Have I thought about buying a Chromebook? Actually, I have thought about it when I was buying this, which is my ThinkPad T450. And this is a very cheap laptop, it's 200 pounds, and it had decent specs, like eight gigs of RAM, an i5, and 250 gig of SSD space. I think the reason I didn't go with Chrome OS is because I actually really like using desktop applications. That's something that Chrome OS just currently doesn't do. Would be really useful if it did, because of course that Pixel Slate would be way more uh, kind of recommended than it already is, and way more relevant. And I think that's probably where a lot of the iPad Pixel uh, Slate-esque kind of stuff really comes in. And overall, I would love to see those applications like the full Adobe suite that we see on desktop. I'd like to see all of that go to the ARM-based stuff. In general, I got some pretty interesting questions this time around. Sorry if I didn't answer any of your questions. I try and do as many as I can without going into a rant and I try to stay relevant to the topic. I also am really sorry about the, the audio. If it's really that bad, I don't know if it is or not, if this mic picks it up. And I really do hate the fact that I'm not able to put out the V30 video on Tuesday, well today, because I have a lot of it planned, I have a lot of it shot, and the fact that I can't do much, I, I do need my data. There's probably about 800 gigs to a terabyte of stuff that needs to be recovered, and I've got to make sure, you know, the power doesn't cut out, and I've kind of got to baby this area to make sure my computer doesn't die whilst it's doing the recovery. And yeah, guys, upgrade, upgrade your hard drives after like, a year or two because I've had those drives for five years and they're already starting to break. Anyway, that's been it from me. Thank you all so much for watching. Hopefully you did like this video. Uh, if you did, like, leave a like. If you didn't like it, dislike and comment, subscribe if you're new around here to never miss a video like this one. I want to give a massive shout out to my patrons. Uh, you guys are awesome and I'm going to be doing some exclusive, actually edited first impressions of the products that I'm reviewing over on my Patreon. So if you want to see that early, go and consider joining. I think it's only like a dollar is the lowest amount you can subscribe to and you get like all of this exclusive stuff that I'm gonna be outputting to do with the ThinkPad, to do with the V30, which I'll try and upload a little bit early so you guys get a bit more access before this thing comes out. And then also some other things like the Samsung S2, I believe it's called the Gear S2, and there'll be massive links. This guy sent out the Gear S2 Classic, absolute monster, thank you so much. Sent it all the way from Germany, actually and I'm gonna be reviewing that as well. Also check out my social media links in the video description below and Discord, they're all there. My name's been Ryan Thomas for Feltech and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.